before I before I call the member, um, I am going to. Um, I didn't interrupt the minister while she was reading her speech, uh, but I do want to make it clear to ministers that they do not have a general exemption from the standing order um, or the, the uh, report of the select committee uh, in relation to reading speeches. There is where matters are highly technical and at first reading uh, there are exemptions. Um, I think it's fair to say that parts of this bill were technical, but um, ministers should not read their... In, in fact, no member should read uh, their entire speech. So what I'm indicating is that uh, at first reading, uh, people are much more flexible, uh, but at, by this stage of a bill, uh, except for the very technical parts, members should not read their speeches. Speaker. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Jacinda Ardern. Mr Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, it's uh, my duty on behalf of Labor to give a second reading contribution on the Child Protection Child Sex Offender Register um, Bill. And I think it's really important, particularly with legislation like this, as it was with uh, the legislation we had before this House via a Members Bill around uh, name changes um, by, uh, via the Birth, Deaths and Marriages Act of sex offenders, it's very important that we are absolutely clear about what bills like this will achieve and what they won't achieve. Because sometimes uh, the mere title of a bill can be very misleading. So I want to use my second reading speech, Mr Speaker, to be very clear on that front, but to also extend some challenges to the Minister regarding our support for this bill. Because during the debate, particularly during the submissions at Select Committee, it became very clear to us um, that unlike what the Minister um, has, has set before this House, uh, there have been trade-offs with this bill. The amount of expenditure that will go into the creation of this register will be well beyond what the public would expect and is undoubtedly coming at a, at a cost to investment in other areas. So I will set out that, that challenge a little bit further on. Um, but first, um, Mr Speaker, what does this bill do? Um, well, it requires offenders to register um, with an official um, uh, sex offender register if they fall under certain criteria, which are if they're convicted or one of the child sex offenders listed in a schedule to the bill, if they were aged 18 or over when they offended, very important because, of course, um, there is separate jurisdiction for those under um, that age via the Youth Court and Dangatahi Courts, um, and we deal with them there, um, are either sentenced to um, imprisonment or a non-custodial sentence and if it's a non-custodial sentence, are specifically directed by the judge to be registered. I think that's an important point. If it is a non-custodial sentence, that will be indicative of the severity of the crime. And in that circumstance, we wouldn't want a blanket rule of thumb. We would want the discretion of the judge to be applied. And then also, of course, a person guilty of any offence that's set out in the schedule that may have committed that crime in a foreign jurisdiction would also have to register. Now, the onus, it's not a default registration, the onus would sit um, with the offender um, to fulfil those requirements. Of course, um, that will in itself require um, certain mechanisms to be set up for returning offenders to ensure that they are aware of that responsibility. Um, and likewise, anyone um, who is covered by um, the bill uh, and who changes their details at any point because there are requirements that sit on uh, that fall upon them to uh, to make sure that the those who hold the register are aware of those detailed changes. This is where there will be confusion, however. The bill in its title, the Child Sex Offender Registry, implies that that is an accessible piece of information. Now, the reason that it probably implies that, I would say, is because there has been some debate for some time, driven by groups like Sensible Sentencing, that there should be, for public safety, a sex offender register. And they never put in the caveat when they talk about it that it, whether or not it should be publicly available or only available to government departments. This bill is very clear. The register 
is only available to specified agencies, and they are the police, the Department of Corrections, the Ministry of Social Development, Housing New Zealand, and they are able to share amongst themselves. The only exception is if the Commissioner of Police, the Commissioner, so it's at a very high uh, level that this discretion is used, believes that an offender posed a threat to the, the life, welfare or sexual safety of a particular child or particular children, affected persons um, such as parent guardians or teachers under those circumstances can be informed. Now, that is very particular, and we might consider it to be a set of circumstances, for instance, where um, someone who, who may have been um, uh, the victim of predatory behaviour um, and uh, that sex offender perhaps is, has some potential for contact, perhaps might be an example. But what I will be seeking from the Minister in uh, committee stages are a few more examples of the way that discretionary power would be used, because in the bill, it does seem to be rather confined, but it does still allow groups such as teachers and does not necessarily give the degree to which the individual or individuals could, for instance, that include an entire classroom of children, um, an entire um, set of parents for an entire classroom of children to be informed. I think we need to be absolutely clear that where these details are revealed to the public, that we know the parameters and criteria that will apply to that. This is otherwise not a public register. And this is one of the SOPs that Labour will be seeking for this bill, and that is to change the name. It is misleading, and as part of the need to protect this bill from ever becoming public, I think the name of the bill should be changed to something like the Child Protection Child Sex Offender um, Database for government agencies, or something to that effect, something that implies this is definitely not a register that can be accessed by the public, nor should it ever be. And the penalties need to reflect that. And I see a quizzical look across the chamber from my colleague Chris Bishop. The reason I'm so stuck on this point is because it would take, it would take one amendment by one minister in the future, and he knows this to be true, one amendment by one minister in the future to dramatically change this bill and allow it to be a public register. It would not take much. And I think this parliament needs to be clear in its intentions uh, and, and be clear that the evidence state, the evidence states, well, I think the change of name would give clarity to the public because I've certainly heard members of the public who believe that this is a public registry because the word register implies that because of the way the debates have been constructed around um, the issue of registries. So, um, well, well, words to, I need, maybe I need a little more creativity and time, um, uh, Chris Bishop. But the point is there. We do need something that clearly indicates that it won't be a public registry, and we need the penalties to be, reflect the fact that this should uh, never be made um, public. But one of the substantive issues that Labour has always, um, and the reason it shouldn't be made public, I want to come back to this point, is because of the evidence that tells us that a public register would do more harm than good. And when I say harm, I don't mean vigilante harm. I actually mean the harm that sits at the core of purpose of this bill, which is to keep families and children safe. If it's about keeping children safe, we know the likelihood of reoffending by those who are convicted of sex, offend uh, sex offences is heightened by acts like public registers. International evidence makes that absolutely clear. So if it's about safety, then we should be absolutely rock solid that this should never be made public. The second point, uh, and this was a point made very clearly by submitters who work in this field every day, particularly a submission from a, an academic that stands out in my mind from Auckland University who specialises in the kind of rehabilitation programmes that are offered to sex offenders in New Zealand and had done a lot of um, research into the most successful interventions when it comes to sex offences, particularly those perpetrated against children. Her submission was very, very clear. A bill like this does very little, does very little when we're talking about 
um, uh, reducing risk and keeping people safe. Uh, but we are about to spend, and this will stagger people, $146 million over 10 years on a database to be shared by government departments. $146 million. That is staggering. Now, the Minister tells the House that that will not lessen the amount that is therefore spent on rehabilitation. Well, it's certainly not going to increase the amount either. And our concern is that the submission that was made by, um, by experts in the field was that there is already a shortage of programs in this space and access is difficult. So I would like the Minister at committee stages to tell the House that she will be investing the equivalent amount over 10 years, $14 million per annum, into rehabilitation programs specifically in this field. And if she is willing to do that, then we will believe that nothing is being lost in this space by spending $146 million on something that is unproven to reduce harm. And our support, we will be looking to support this bill or not based on some of the amendments that are made at committee stages. We are heavily caveated at the moment because we are not convinced necessarily that this will make families and children safer. Matt Ducey.